Welcome everybody to the It's Never Too Late show. I'm Suzanne Oshima and I'm a life and love transformational coach at Your Next Amazing Story. Today we have a very special guest, Dr. John Gray, and he's the author of several books, most notably, as you all know, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. So welcome, Dr. John Gray. I'm so excited to have you here. Uh, Suzanne, it's nice to be back with you. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, and I love this topic, so this is fun for me. I know. So ladies, what we are going to talk about is how to talk to a man so he'll listen, because I will say, when I used to be a matchmaker and I worked with both men and women, and I would get feedback from both sides, I would find, I was like, they're speaking two different languages. Were they even on the same date? And so that's why I wanted to talk to you about this topic. So Dr. Gray, can you share with us why there is that big difference in how men communicate and how women communicate? Well, this takes me back, uh, actually, I think it's 30 years. Yeah, it takes me back 35 years when I first started talking about the differences between men and women. And I didn't really have the fun title, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus then. So it was still people who like, you know, some people get all edgy and upset when you talk about differences. They imagine that we're all the same. And if we can just talk about sameness, then we'll all be happy, harmony, you know? And, and, but the problem is we are different. That's the reality. And second to that, if we can understand those differences in a positive way, conflict becomes much and much less and appreciation becomes much and much more. And the way I would describe it then, and I'm going to do that right now, this brings me back to basic communication. If I, I live in, in California here, I only speak English. Maybe I also speak a little Venusian. But I, I, I would talk back in those days. I'd say, now imagine I go to Japan, and I don't know how to speak Japanese. And we have a conversation. I can't complain that this person doesn't understand me. <laughs> I need to recognize they speak a different language. We need a translator. Or I need to learn how to speak Japanese. And then people will understand me. And so the topic today, which is how to speak so a man will understand you, how to feel heard, understood. And actually, when you're wanting to feel understood, you're also wanting someone to feel more empathy for me, for you, and understand you better so they can give more to you. And that's okay. That's all right. And we're going to learn how to do that today without having to completely learn another language. But you do have to understand that if you want a man to understand you, and this is actually 101 in all communication classes. If anyone, regardless of gender, doesn't understand you, it's your responsibility, not theirs, to self-correct. And, you know, this is like with my children when I would say, well, what do you mean by that? You're not listening. You're not listening. <laughs> they would always blame me. And, of course, they're children. But we still do that. When somebody doesn't understand us, we become frustrated with them as opposed to feeling the frustration, and it's very frustrating to not feel understood, but then to back up and reflect, let me try saying this differently. Let me try saying this differently. And that's a, a phrase can become your mantra when you don't feel understood, is let me try saying this differently. Then you make the adjustment, and then the other person goes, oh, okay, they're not blaming me, and then they're going to be more interested. That's a, a simple part of it. Let me try explaining myself differently. That just softens tension and whatever. But our childlike reaction is you're not listening. You don't understand. Why aren't you listening? What's wrong with you? And really, it's, it's, that's a defensive reaction because the button it pushes deep inside of us is if somebody doesn't listen to us, it's kind of like, am I not making sense? You know, is there something wrong with me? And it's not that there's not, some, not something, it's not that there's something wrong with you. It's the delivery is in a language that they're not understanding. And you need to correct the delivery. But when you don't understand how men and women are different, hard to correct the delivery. And there's so many simple things you can do to even avoid needing to co correct the delivery. Anything you say, and we're talking about, I think we're talking mainly to single women, and uh, anything you say on a date, if you're coming from a place of trusting, accepting, and appreciating the man you're with, really anything you say is going to be fine. You're not going to upset him. Because when you, when you say he doesn't really understand me, usually that phrase comes up when you're communicating. There's many reasons, but here's one. And he gets upset with you. Okay, right? Is that one of the, one of the yeah. key things? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, a reaction. If I ask men, you know, what is it your pet peeve? 
pet peeves? What are your complaints about women? You know, and these are not necessarily accurate about women, but it's what men feel. Okay, so don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you what men feel, all right? And what men often feel is women complain too much, women nag too much, and women control. And most women, if they're in a relationship or have been in one, they can pretty much agree with me when I when men say, well, I do nag a bit, but he doesn't do things. And uh, well, I do complain, but he does everything wrong. And you know, I do so much better, I give and give, but he doesn't do, give back to me. I have a right to my complaints. And I go, okay, but if you complain about a man to a man, he's not gonna listen to you. That uh well, what else can I do? Well, let's learn today what else you can do. Because you, you know, somebody steps on your foot. You need to let them know you step on your foot and it hurts. Otherwise, they're gonna keep stepping on your foot. So that that's basic primitive. Uh, experience, you know, that actually started in our primitive brain. And, and just to be clear, we we know now that most of what we think and feel and react is all automatic. Okay, <laughs> it's just conditioned responses from childhood that we picked up from our parents, who picked up from their parents, who picked up from their parents, who picked up from their parents. This is all conditioning. It's instinct. It's automatic reactions, all the way back to their parents who were monkeys. So a lot of what we do is like monkeys and we have to realize that, own it, and then become like human and learn another way of communicating. Uh, especially if you're dealing with somebody with a different language, that makes it even more difficult. So let me go back to when we were monkeys because we still have uh, basically 95% of our brain is a DNA of monkeys and lizards. Uh, this, is, this is scientists, okay? This is what they say. This part of the brain, which is right up here in the forehead is the human part of us. That's where we have human DNA. Now, all of us, we're not actually monkeys, of course, but we're like monkeys in our reactions. So let's go back to a time where we're monkeys and trying to communicate, but we don't speak words. We don't understand language. So if I step on your foot and you laugh, it's because you don't understand. I'm sorry, if you step on my foot and I feel hurt by that and you laugh, clearly you haven't understood that when somebody steps on your foot, it's painful. And you can't communicate that to me because you don't have language at that point. How do you, you, how do you communicate? That hurts. Don't do that. I'd appreciate if you would actually do it differently. And well, how do you communicate? Well, you make a big noise. Ah, oh, you might get angry. Ah, oh, you might run away. You, you might cry. Emotions are the way that the, the primitive part of our brain communicates we're not getting what we want, particularly in women. Okay, this is a phenomena and for women under small stress, there's eight times more blood flow that goes to this limbic system, which is where you have emotional reactions. Mm -hmm. And many women will suppress it, hide it, but it's there, it shows up as stress. Some women will express it and it shows up as men not wanting to be around you and not wanting to listen to you because <laughs> it sounds like blame. It's like, you did bad thing. You're bad. You're no good. Yeah. And so, and that's a biological reality for the women's brain is they do have this immediate emotional response to, to little things. If it's for men, they have a, their immediate response to little sources of stress is to detach. Have you ever seen a man sort of think, oh, I got to think about that. Or, or he'll say, oh, well, it's no big deal. Well, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Well, so what? nothing I can do about it. So see, he detaches. That's the way he deals with small problems. If the problem is big, then he will have strong emotional reaction. Now, this is reality. This is how our brains are designed. If the problem's big, men get angry, they get upset, they get all red in the face, they, <laughs> they run away, fight or flight. You know, these are the, the cortisol response is the high stress response. Men become more emotional women become more emotional under little response, uh, under little stress, adrenaline. Adrenaline comes before cortisol. When women have cortisol, they often become like men, detached. They say, oh, well, I'm not gonna bother with that person anymore. <laughs> you go from hot to cold, men go from cold to hot. So when you have a hot reaction, emotional response to something, you're speaking a monkey language and he does not understand it and he will not listen to it. He will get defensive. He will make you wrong. And the reason he makes you wrong is from his perspective. If you were like him and he doesn't understand how you're different, you're overreacting. See, he doesn't react that way to little things. If it's a big problem, he has a big reaction. 
but it, emotional reaction. So if you're having an emotional reaction to something and you don't have to say, oh, I'm so sad or I'm so disappointed when you communicate to say it's an emotional reaction, just being frustrated, being disappointed, being unhappy, being argumentative, being uh, dissatisfied, just being in that state is communicating to him your emotion of frustration or disappointment. disappointment. And when it's a little thing, he will always perceive it as an overreaction. Now, Freud is a man, so he also saw it as an overreaction. And so that's where we got the phrase, she's overreacting. And that, as women <laughs> got so sick and tired of hearing that, it became politically wrong to say that. And as a marriage counselor, I would say to a man, never say she's overreacting. Yeah, but, we don't like to hear that. No, no, you don't like to hear that. But from a man's perspective, you are. Just as you would say as a woman, he's underreacting. He's ignoring me. He's not being attentive to me. He's not being considerate of me. He's not seeing me. He's minimizing me. He's underreacting. He pushes things down. You bring things up. So, so we have to understand this is our realities. We look at things differently until we learn a different way. So if you're a woman and you're, um, you have any kind of emotional negative state and you want him to like hear you in order, you want to communicate, oh, I'd like you to do it this way. You stepped on my foot. If you communicate, he's going to hear you the wrong way because you're communicating in a language that he doesn't understand. So how do you get him to understand you? Well, you just have to learn a few phrases, that's all. And then you can speak your own language. And that phrase is, I just want you to know, I wanna talk about something, it'll only take a few minutes. That's the first thing you say. It only takes a few minutes. Because men have the experience of you going on and on and on and on, and, and, and then it just keeps going. Now, you're laughing because that happens, but that's also men's pet peeve. And why that is, is that women use language in four different ways and men only relate to one. Okay, so this is how we speak differently. Women use language to make a point, to convey information. Men use language to convey a point, to, make, to give information, to solve a problem. She wants to solve a problem. And so we're gonna use language to work together to solve the problem. But women often use language as a way of discovering deeper levels of what she thinks and feels. So it's, a, it's like you have a big purse and I say to my wife, honey, do you have your brush? And she's going to pull this out and pull this out and pull this out and pull this out. and that. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so it's women often will want to go around and around and around to get to what they really want to say. And there's a lot of reasons for that. It's like if you want to reveal something uh, more intimate, you want to first test that he's interested in the things that are less intimate. <laughs> so, so that's another reason women talk is they talk to experience intimacy. So one is to discover what you really, what's the point you want to make. And, you know, I'm, I'm both masculine and feminine. That's our objective is to be on our male and female side at the same time. So I'm always talking to discover, but I'm also always making a point. I usually always know my point, but I discover how I'm going to say it. Well, women, when they're, when they're often wanting to be heard, it's a need to sort of flesh things out, almost like a comedy uh, team would do when they're writing comedy for movies. They'll just throw out ideas, you know, and, and throw that one away. Nobody judges them. You just sort of say this, and then you say the opposite. I think I want this. No, I think I want that. No, I want to buy this. No, I want to buy that. It's, it's exploration, which is fun to do, and it's helpful to do. So sometimes women are just sort of processing their day out loud, and another time, women are talking in order to experience intimacy. If you uh, basically, if you're a woman and you have this experience of emotional response when you have adrenaline and your day, if you're working, is filled with adrenaline. Every time there's a, a challenge, a problem, a pressure, uh, a potential danger, a loss, uh, a responsibility, you have to do it. Anytime you feel I have to do or worried you can't do or you're not doing, what that does, that produces an adrenaline response. And for women, it is blood flow that goes to the emotional part of the brain. And you know in the workplace, you're going to be more successful if you're not expressing negative emotions. You have to be confident. You have to be generous. You have to smile on your face. I'm going to get this job done. You know, that's how people like to be around people who are positive. So what women have to go through something that men don't 
is all day long you have to suppress your emotions, suppress your emotions, suppress your emotions. So it's literally like you're you're having to separate yourself, a part of you, from the world. See, mm. it's a, and so that's called non-intimate. Right. Intimacy, intimacy is see inside of me. So if there's things you have to hide from the world to get love, to get a, a sec, you know, to get appreciation, to get trust, to get money, to get success, that's all good. We all want that. That's part of what we want. But another part of women particularly is the need for intimacy. The intimacy is a greater need for women. Why? Because intimacy increases estrogen. And the, one of the biological realities of women and men is that men don't need so much estrogen to regulate stress. As a matter of fact, a man will be stress-free if he has no estrogen. <laughs> but he's not very loving and not very happy, but he doesn't have stress. Right. Cortisol, cortisol. So all, men are only when the cortisol stress response comes up, that's when estrogen goes high in men, and that's when men misbehave. When, when a man is angry, for example, or has a negative emotion, it's his estrogen is high. For a woman, if she's angry and upset, if she's stressed, her estrogen levels are going up, but she feels nobody will hear me, there's no intimacy, I can't share myself, then her testosterone comes up. And when women are making testosterone and not making estrogen, their stress levels go higher. So they, this is a problem for women and, and, and hormonally a problem is their estrogen levels go low. And if you're already 45 women, your estrogen levels are starting to drop naturally. And you've gone through menopause, they drop dramatically. This is a natural phenomenon that as women age, their ability, their confidence increases, that's testosterone. Their vulnerability, uh, ability to be vulnerable decreases. The need to be vulnerable decreases because their estrogen levels aren't as high. And so how do you solve this problem? So we come down to just, let's look at basic plumbing and we'll come back to communication because there's four ways women communicate. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll say them now and then we'll explain them. But one is simply to make a point like a man, but another is to explore and discover what's going on inside. Another is to experience intimacy, which is intimacy is all the feelings and all the experiences that I can't reveal to others is it's creating a gulf. You know, part of me feels completely not seen, not heard, not authentic. I need somebody I can reveal that to who's going to love me, who's going to understand me, who's going to see me, who's going to hear me. And, and not that I'm trying to change them. I just want to experience intimacy because intimacy sharing turns out to be one of the most powerful ways to increase estrogen. And estrogen is the most powerful hormone for lowering a woman's stress levels and not for men. Men, it's testosterone, the basic plumbing is when testosterone goes up, his stress goes down. When stress goes up because he doesn't have enough, or he doesn't have enough confidence in the day. See, if there's a problem and I have confidence and solve the problem, my testosterone goes up. But let's say I'm going through stress and I don't know I can solve all the problems, what I'm gonna do. I'm running out of testosterone. When I come home, I need to rebuild my testosterone. And that's why men go to their cave. They pull away, they don't wanna talk. Uh, they have to rebuild their testosterone. So for women, they have to rebuild their estrogen and intimacy will do it because the workplace doesn't give you a lot of estrogen. It based because you can't reveal yourself. Literally think about sex. Okay. Sex is when a woman's estrogen levels are going to go the highest. And in order to have an orgasm, your, your estrogen levels have to reach their peak. And it doesn't matter if you're menopausal, beyond menopause or premenopausal, to have an orgasm, it doesn't matter how much estrogen your body makes. It means your estrogen just has to be dominant. You see, you have to be able to let go of your testosterone temporarily, which means allow a man to do you, not you doing him. He has to do you. Estrogen is produced when you feel someone is guiding you, leading you, helping you, supporting you. You're following them. You're enjoying them. You're getting what you need from them. Think about a doctor's appointment. That's a good estrogen stimulator, is he asks you to un take off your clothes. <laughs> Already your estrogen is going to go up because you feel safe because he's a doctor. Right. <laughs> they say, I'm a doctor, as if that matters. If you understood what men doctors are thinking all the time, you, <laughs> you but I'm a doctor. I've been trained not to desire you. Okay. <laughs> 
Men are men. But anyway, so he, it, would you uh, disrobe and I will examine you. All right, already the fact that you feel safe because he's a doctor, he's not going to take advantage of you. And of course, I'm not saying he's going to take advantage of you. I'm just saying that inside he has his secret reality too. He enjoys seeing a naked woman. Every man enjoys seeing a naked woman if he finds her attractive. And sometimes he doesn't, so it's not going to be going on anything. But it's, we're, we're designed as men to be turned on, uh, a curious, interested, appreciative of a woman's form. Mm -hmm. And so are women. Women are beautiful, you know, right. stunningly beautiful. And, but why nakedness actually inspires arousal in men is its vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You see, it's you being, it's allowing him to be intimate with you. So you don't get naked unless you feel safe. So you go to your doctor, you feel safe. The next thing you do is you're going to him because you depend on him for something of value to you. And the more you depend on him to tell you or say something uh, to keep you alive, the more estrogen you're going to produce. Just a doctor's visit is more important than the drugs he gives you. That's why placebos are so powerful. You know, they've done placebos on blood pressure medicine that will, uh, uh, that would, for example, it's supposed to lower your blood pressure. And a, a person wants to raise their blood pressure if they have low blood pressure. Some people have low blood pressure. Uh, anyway, to shorten that up, I, I'm forgetting that study. It's, you have a placebo, you can tell somebody this is going to lower your blood, it's going to raise your blood pressure if you have low, and it'll actually lower it. It, it will do the... I, I'm, excuse me, I, I'm not a medical doctor, so I'm going to leave that one out. But placebos work in many, many cases just as much as a drug does. You see, what you have to know is one out of four women are taking an antidepressant. If it's helping you, it's primarily helping you only because you think the doctor has helped you. Your estrogen level goes up. You take it every time. You feel, that, oh, I'm doing what my doctor told me to do. Uh, I see this dutiful people in their cars with masks on and we're in COVID now. Now, why do you need to wear a mask in your car? Now, granted, some people are just so used to it, they forget it. But other people, you see, they're smiling on their face. You mm -hmm. know, I'm following the rules. I, I, it's like a child, you know, I have someone to take care of me. I follow the rules. I will get love and I do what people tell me to do. And that will raise your estrogen. And that's why placebos work is I'm a doctor. I have all these things. I have credibility. So you believe in me. And then I say, take this sugar pill and it will work just as effective as one of their medicines. And this is like with antidepressants, it's most dramatic because in order to clear one of these antidepressants, they have to do many, many studies to prove that the antidepressant worked better by one person than the placebo. Hmm. Because in many of the studies, the placebo worked better than the antidepressant. Right. So this is all about hormones. It's feeling I can trust someone, I'm safe, that's your belief system. That will basically produce the hormone oxytocin. And then you can feel, if I, if I feel safe, I can now listen to you, I can depend on you, and I need you. So estrogen is produced when you feel I need you. Now you're a 45-year-old woman, You've learned that men, you can't depend on them. You've been disappointed by them. You've been frustrated by them. You feel older and not as attractive. So you feel, I better just take care of myself because he's going to want a younger woman. You got all these beliefs that keep you from feeling I can depend on a man. Mm -hmm. And that's going to lower your estrogen. I can still depend on my doctor. So at least you don't get as sick because of the stress levels. But it's learning how to communicate effectively with men, which is the theme of today, that when you get this simple thing, how to talk so a man will listen, your estrogen levels will go up and you'll start to experience a whole new level of happiness in your life, which makes men more attracted to you. It makes you enjoy sex even. It wants you to think you're too old for it. I have women friends who are in their 80s having orgasms every week. They do have younger men because most of these old guys don't have the testosterone anymore. But if you learn how to get your estrogen up, you can raise the dead. <laughs> you can bring out the testosterone in a man. It happens, but it's all these hormones. See, men need testosterone to fall in love and to experience interest, motivation. And of course, that, that's a most revealed when he can have an erection. So we have all these men who have to use a pill to get an erection. Unfortunately, they don't know how to make testosterone. Many men take testosterone, which in the long run lowers your testosterone as well. When a man has lower testosterone, this is good education to know what you're dealing with here. 
why men are not interested in you. It's not you. My favorite thing to explain to women is that as you get older, yeah, you don't look like a young model, okay? Get that. But what makes you less attractive is you're not making estrogen. Estrogen puts out a pheromone, a smell that you put out, and men have a nose underneath this nose, right up in the tip of the nose, there's two little flaps, and their one job is to smell estrogen. And if I smell estrogen, my plumbing says I got a job to do. And when it stops smelling estrogen, it doesn't work. You need to have estrogen for men to be attracted to you. And what makes you produce estrogen in one situation is taking your clothes off because mm -hmm. that means you feel safe. That's a symbol of being safe. Right. So here's a fun story for people over in their 50s and 60s and 70s. Uh, three women in their 60s go into a, a like a Victoria's Secrets and two women are just buying standard underwear, uh, which men would say old woman underwear. <laughs> <laughs> we call those granny panties. Okay, good. <laughs> granny panties. Okay. So I'll, I'll put it that way. And so she's wearing granny panties. It does nothing for, for him. And I'll just throw in there that the cotton ones don't do anything for me either. It's got to have some frill. It's got to have some potential see-through. So it's silky and it's soft like a breast. It feels like a breast. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the best. So here's this one woman and she's buying the, the sexy stuff. And the two other women, the, it's a bigger story, but I'm going to shorten it. Two other women, same age. Uh, they're buying their, their granny panties, their functional underwear. Because there is, there's a granny panties and then there's just not so much granny panties, but there's just cotton. You know, it's like what boys wear. White cotton is what a young teenage boy will wear. Right. I don't want to see that. Okay. <laughs> we call those tidy whities. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So your tidy whities and your granny panties. That's good. I think, <laughs> remember the language. It's not a turn on to men. And uh, he reaches over and feels that. He's like, go back to bed. Okay. So basically what this, this, I asked the, the woman at the counter I, at the store, I said, yeah, interesting stories for my book. And she said this one. So these three women come in and one is doing her, uh, her granny panties. The other one's doing her whitey tidies, And the other one's doing some sexy lingerie. And the other women look at her and go, what are you doing? You can't wear that. And she says, I can wear this. She says, you're too fat. Another one says, you're too old. Another one says, you look disgusting. Okay. <laughs> this is what women say to each other. I'm not saying it as a man. This is women saying it to each other. And then the, the woman who's buying the sexy underwear, she says, you know, and it's revealed, you know, it's not like just show it all. It's like some, just like negligee over it and the whole shebang. Cause you know, you'd be a little embarrassed if you're not looking perfect. You turn the lights down. That's all natural. You want to feel confident and safe that somebody's going to, you know, become more and more aroused. Cause see, what this woman said, she says, you don't understand men. When you're the only naked woman in the room, to him, you're a million bucks. And that's what you miss out on women when you don't understand men and sex. Is it, yeah, we look at this woman, we look at this woman, we look at this woman. That's our nature is to look. But we're not gonna marry those women. Often we think they're out of our league, they're too young, they don't want me, but they're still gonna look. That's our nature is to look. And they're not thinking, oh, bummer, I have my wife over here. She doesn't look that way anymore. He doesn't think that, that's not in his process. You think it is, mm -hmm. but it's not what he does because he doesn't compare like you do. You, you have all your romantic fantasies. And you know, I know him, women come in, my husband, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do this, he doesn't. <laughs> you're, you're all about you. <laughs> And that's okay. Men want you to be about you if we can be successful in providing what you want. Mm -hmm. Some women will say, oh, men are so selfish. Are you kidding? Men are selfish? You have no idea what men are. You're missing the whole boat. If you look at a man, who goes into the army and sleeps in ditches, eats crap food, 120 temperatures, shoots a gun, has to kill people or get killed and dies? loses legs, loses arms, and does it without complaining. No woman does that, period. Even the women that join the army don't do that. They're the nurses, they're the administrators, they're not putting them in harm's way, and they don't want to go in harm's way, except the few who think I have to be a man to be loved. This is who men are. You know, firemen, we got these big fires going on in California right now. Do you know, these guys are getting sick. It's horrible. It's massive heat. They're carrying all this equipment. It's dragging. It's a, it's a huge thing. And men do it. These heroes, this is what men are. That's what they're about. And that's what that man you're, you divorced, 
that man you dated who doesn't seem like he's that guy, he's in there and your job is to bring him out. And the way you do it is communicate his language. And I'm gonna to get to that, I'm building up to it. It's a little foreplay. We got to 30 minutes already, so I better get to it. So, <laughs> so you have to have a little foreplay. So anyway, you need to know that it's you and, it, and when you're naked, for example, that's, that's intimacy. You're showing him something that you don't show anybody else. That's what turns him on. You're making him special, just like he has to be special he has to give you the messages you're special for you to feel that safe. And that's a growing process. It doesn't happen right away. You have to be able to increase your estrogen using him. That will increase his testosterone and communication. How to communicate in a way where a man will listen is the most powerful tool you've got. So how do you do it? Let's go through the steps. Before you go there, I want to ask you a question. When you say, you know, get vulnerable and open yourself up and get naked, you mean emotion, like, yeah, yeah that would be great to get physically naked, but. Right, you always get emotional first, okay? Right. But I'm using the sex part of it. Right. It, it gets your attention as well as, that's, we all know that's vulnerability. I'm asking you to be that vulnerable emotionally. Okay. And so I just want to be clear though, also, because I know for a lot of strong independent women, and I'm one of them, is it's so scary for us to get vulnerable and let that wall down. So before we even get to the communication, is there something you can share with the ladies where they, that can help them to let down that wall? Because that is one of the most scary things so that we don't even get to the communication part. Well, already you've just said it is the fact that you're willing to the cur you have to find the courage to do that that increases your estrogen you mm. see that is you know just the act of doing it you can already you already said it that's the scariest thing being scared is vulnerability okay that's one aspect of vulnerability and it's so scary to do and you don't do it right away even if you have a loving partner we'll talk about physical intimacy if you don't just take off all your clothes and get into bed that's kind of boring maybe a few times as a variety he walks in and you're naked, that's okay. But, but if you're having a sexy evening, you wear something and you slowly take things off. You know, you, you, you have to build arousal. When a man is feeling aroused, you naturally feel safer and safer and your body goes, oh, he really wants me. Because men can't judge you in any way when they're turned on. Okay, when, <laughs> now when they're turned off, they can, uh, when they're done. But uh, if they don't feel successful, that's a whole nother story. So let's come back to it's mm -hmm. very, very scary. And what can I say to make it less scary and motivate you to do it? Okay, so here's that answer to that. When you know how to do it, it becomes less scary. Is a love guarantee if you know how to do something. Now, if I'm talking to men, I tell men, listen, if you learn how to listen to a woman and provide empathy, understanding, validation, uh, those basic things and respect when you provide those things she will go into a well and, and instead of her suddenly feeling better she actually might go deeper into not feeling so good and not feeling so good but then she will rise up from that well like a wave that rises up and right. she will be so loving and so appreciative of you there's a love guarantee so i'm going to give you as women the love guarantee so that you can go to that place and you're going to be safe because if you don't feel safe, you can't even get to that place. You might know it's there, but you can't really fully feel it until you feel safe. So here's the things, the magic phrases, and there's many of them, and you don't have to use all of them, but one of them is, the, I think the most powerful one, but there's others, is this is not a big deal, but I want to tell you what, what trigger got triggered inside of me. Okay, this is not a big deal. I just want to talk about what happened today. Uh, or our, And another one is, I'm so happy to see you. And I just had so much stress today. I'd love to be able to just vent it for a few minutes and you don't have to say anything or do anything about it. I just want to get it over, get it out. And then I let it go. Uh, is that cool? Would you do that? Would you just listen for a few minutes? And he'll say, yeah, it's a few minutes, no big deal. And then you're going to say something like I had this problem. I was so mad at this guy or so frustrated with this person, whatever you feel, you're hundred percent authentic. You reveal what's inside. And the first training session with him is you're revealing things, not about him, but other people. Workplace, because you have to remember, at your workplace, there's, there's adrenaline, there's stress. You will have all these sort of little emotional reactions that build up and build up. You need to come into your date and your relationship with this guy and say, oh, 
you know, I just need to decompress. I need to vent some of my feelings of the day and I feel so good. I'm so glad I can tell you, you know, it's amazing how good it feels for me when I can just let it go. And you don't have to say anything or do anything. Just uh, give me a hug at the end and that's enough for me. I, I just feel so lucky I can be myself with you. And, and, and you practice being yourself with him. Another thing you do to, so a man will listen to you is what do you think? What do you believe? What are your ideas? See, this is being authentic. It makes you more attractive to a man if you disagree with him, if you have different points of view from him, if it's what your point of view is. You know, if you both have the same point of view, great, that's nice and harmonious. It's not going to create any attraction. It's just being with you all the time. There's no attraction. That's why you want somebody in a relationship. He likes you being different, but what he doesn't like, and this is all your communication is broken down because women have this tendency to want to either help a man, change a man, get him to agree with you. So it's called control. You want him to change his point of view. You are expressing your point of view and you want him to believe what you believe. Like, uh, just to give a quick look, stories are good. Okay, so a quick story on this one. A really good friend of mine, sweetheart, wonderful lady. Found, I went to Saudi Arabia and she's a very strong feminist. I'm all, I love feminists, okay? It's just the feminists that don't love me, I, I don't like them, okay? <laughs> I don't have time for them, okay? But, but see, I am a feminist. I'm all about supporting women. It's yeah. just, I see how if you don't support men, you're not a very smart feminist. See, the best feminist knows how to support men. Mm -hmm. See, so women get more. Okay, right. don't make men wrong. When you push men down, you get nothing from them. When you build them up, you get more from them. That's real feminism. So coming back to the story, big feminist, and she knows the injustices that happen to women around the world. And they're huge, without a doubt. And there's huge, what they also don't see, they're only seeing a partial truth. The injustice is to men. The world is an unjust place. There's massive injustice. You know, basically, when I look at how much men get paid, 98% of them, they're slave labor. And I look at uh, women, uh, slave labor as well. I mean, this is a horrible world. It's so unjust, but I'm not, let's go get away from that. Come back to the people listening here. We can afford to have a computer and a Facebook <laughs> or whatever we're doing here. So we're in a different situation. So having said that, in Saudi Arabia, they have all these repressive rules for women. And I'm very much aware of them. And so I'm at a party with this woman who's a feminist. And I mentioned, I just got back from Saudi Arabia. And I was so amazed that it wasn't as dark as I thought it was. And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, actually, I was, uh, you know, it's a hot country. And so dinner started around uh, 10 o'clock at night. I went to a restaurant. It was open air. They're like these tents and open air areas. And there are over a thousand people there. And they'd be like these these tables with 12 people at each table. And I didn't see anybody looking at a cell phone. And they have cell phones. Nobody looked at cell phones. Everybody was conversing. Families were talking. Women were talking to women. Men were talking to men. And everybody and children were being cared for. The whole family was there. And there was a whole feeling of belonging. And it was very positive. And I was like, I've never seen that in America. It was the most amazing thing. And so I was focusing on one positive thing, a partial truth. Yes, bad things happen there too, but a partial truth. She couldn't handle it. She just, she went in the, how can you say that? Don't you know they do this? I say, yeah, I know they do that. And don't you say they do this? I said, yeah, I know they do that. And don't you say they did it? I said, I know that. And she just was so angry and so upset and she would not stop talking to me about it. And I said, I agree with you on all those things. And it was the most amazing thing to see the harmony and happiness in these families and this social event. But you don't know what goes on at home. I go, I understand what goes on at home, but we don't have what they have. We have something else that they don't have partial truth. Everything we have is a partial truth. Mm -hmm. So we're just looking at one side. We have to look at the other side. So the only way I could get this woman to calm down, I mean, she was so irate, was I agree with you. I, okay, it was just a fluke. I, I'm so sorry I said that. You know, and she still to this day was, I can't believe, I can't believe John Gray would like Saudi Arabia. How could you be? It, it was like so fanatical, which, which you can get to. Now, she had a different point of view. If she could have shared her point of view, and this is my point, mm -hmm. without trying to change me, I would see her as even a more amazing person. You see, right. it's to share your point of view and share your passion and let somebody else have something different and go, oh, that's interesting. Well, that makes sense. I can see that. I understand your experience. That's amazing. 
So when a man speaks what you want, if you want him to listen to you, don't let him talk more than you. That's another secret to this whole thing. <laughs> Never let a man talk more than you, unless you're listening to a lecture or something like that. But in a relationship, mm -hmm. what you will tend to do, women, is give what you want. And what you want is a man to be interested, to ask questions, to go deeper inside of you, because that's intimacy. Why do women communicate? Solve problems like men will communicate but you also want to discover things inside yourself. So you sort of go around and around. You also want intimacy. Intimacy makes you feel close, makes you feel safe and loved and open and connected. But you also share your feelings to lower your stress. Simply sharing your feelings with somebody who's listening, if you're stressed, will lower your stress. It doesn't lower stress for men. Don't ask men what they're feeling. Matter of fact, never ask him what he's feeling. I know you want, you want, but really, when you're asking a man his feelings, you want to know that he still likes you after listening to you. <laughs> That's it. You're, you're insecure. Don't ask his feelings. And if he starts talking about his feelings, then say, yeah, tell me what else you think about that. Get him into the thinking mode. That's where he can fall in love with you. That's where he'll stay cool, calm, and collected. And that's where you can stay in your feminine. Because when he's talking about his feelings, you'll start listening to him. And now you're the man listening to his feelings. So don't engage with a man's feelings. If he goes, well, I don't feel like that's true. I said, really, tell me why you think that. Always bring it back to thinking. And if he's saying nothing, of course, you don't want to just talk the whole time. You give him a problem to solve or you ask his opinion about something, but never say, so what are you feeling? It's like, it's like, <laughs> Or he's the other kind of man who goes, well, I feel this and this and this and this. And you go, oh, really? Tell me more. Tell me more. And now he becomes more of a woman and you become the man. You need to become more woman, particularly as you get older. You need more stimulation to create your estrogen because you already have so much confidence in life on your male side. You always want to work on your female side. And women, as they get older and they've been divorced, often they don't get back together. And uh, my thing is don't wait, date. You know, you need to get back into the saddle. And when you get back in the saddle, don't look for a perfect man. Don't look for the soulmate. Don't look for the man you're going to live your life with. If a man is more interested in you than you're interested in him, he's a perfect candidate for you to practice these new communication skills. If you're more interested in him than he's interested in you, you're going to be in your monkey brain. You're trying to earn his love. Whenever you're trying to earn a man's love, you're already in adrenaline. Your hormones are already out of balance. You need to put yourself in a situation where a man's more interested in you than you're interested in him, but he's safe. He's got a job. He's not too needy. Okay, I can train this guy. And you train this guy, one, to hear a woman's point of view who's different, and he will start to experience that because you're going to practice expressing different points of view and being happy that he has a different point of view. And you'll say things like, oh, well, that makes sense. Well, that's a good idea. Amazing. Well, I would have never thought of that. Where does that come from? A little, and then I talk, and then you always shift back to you to talk more about what you think and what you feel. And he will listen because you just paid him. You gave him appreciation. You acknowledge what he said. He thinks that's a good idea. Well, that's helpful. And to get him to talk a little bit, you would say, well, I, I watched in the news and Trump, uh, talk about any time where people are going to disagree, talk about Trump or <laughs> talk about global What's warming. Not? Does any of these say, I was just reading in the paper of this subject and what do you think about that? And then he says what he thinks. What do you think? And you make it safe for him. And you can go, wow, I never thought of it that way because I have a completely different point of view. My point of view is this and this and this. And he'll try to change you because that's what we do as monkeys is we want everybody to agree with us. And when he tries to change you, you, you basically go, well, you're right about that. I can see that, you know? I think I'm, I'm looking at it from a new point of view. That's all. Just let him know he changed you a little bit. Get feed, you know, feed the monkey a banana and it goes away, okay? So it's just, well, go ahead. Let me ask you a question, because this is interesting that you say this. And it's funny, because you did mention this the last time I interviewed you about going with the man that is safe, is always there, likes you more than you like him. And it's funny because a lot of my clients have come back to me and said, yeah, he's all of those things. But Suzanne, I literally, I can't, I have no feelings towards him. I don't have any chemistry or attraction. I can't even imagine kissing him. So how can I be with the man that, yeah, I get that he's always there and he's safe, but 
I don't know how I can overcome this block in my mind that I can't kiss him, let okay. alone have sex with him. First of all, they're telling you that 90% of all that is just what they imagine it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, it, uh, one or two dates and that's the reality. That's the point of it. You don't imagine having sex with him because you imagine practicing being vulnerable with him. You say, I have no feelings for him. Great. Now you're going to use him like you would go to a therapist. Hopefully you go to a therapist that you're not wanting to have sex with. You go to somebody who's trained in asking you questions, but he's not trained in asking you questions. He doesn't have to be trained in asking you questions. He will listen to you if you do the things I'm saying and go deep. Use him as your coach. Use him as your therapist and enjoy being loving because all men want to feel like they can help women. So just enjoy, like I got, I can love, I can be so generous to this guy. And what you love, what you do is you're giving him the opportunity to help you, not because you want to have a long-term relationship with him. Get it. You just want to learn how to be vulnerable in the presence of a man. And you're not going to be vulnerable in the presence of a man that you're trying to get. It just doesn't happen because you're already at 45 and 50 and 60. You haven't learned how to do this. This is a lot of programming. You got to undo of trying to control, complain, focus, change, nurture, improve. Men aren't good enough. And, and you know, the, the most women, this is the problem. Okay. When I get to a woman who's in her forties and fifties, and they often say to me, I just date these men. I feel nothing. They're good. They're wonderful, but I can't fall in love. I go, why can't I fall in love? I said, cause you don't know how to be vulnerable. You don't know how to use the man to get in touch with your emotions, to go deep inside of your issues. Use him for that. Be authentic with him in terms of your vulnerability. Then what you'll find is you'll have estrogen. And with estrogen, you'll start to love men more. You'll start to appreciate men more and men will start being more interested in you. And maybe he's the wrong guy. You might discover he's the right guy. You know, one of my daughters, Lauren, who writes so many blogs at my website, I highly recommend her for women, particularly. The guys watch it more because she tells women, she tells men how, how women think, you know, men want to know. But what she, what she explains is that with her partner of 10 years, in the beginning, he was just this guy that she was not sexually attracted to at all. And they've been childhood friends, right? They were in drama together. And he always had a crush on her and she, he was younger. She was not interested at all. Then later, I told him, you should go. I was looking for a husband for my daughter. And he's a very fine man, just a very fine man. But Lori wasn't interested in him. I said, you should call her, persist, just take her out, just be friends with her. And so he was friends with her. And then it just after six months, she went, what happened? Suddenly she looked at him completely differently. And he's Superman. And he is. I mean, my daughter is the best husband I could ever imagine for her. It's amazing. You know, people always said, oh, your poor daughter, she'll never find a man like you. I know. No, she'll find a better man like me than me. And she did. He's an amazing guy. He can do things. <laughs> oh, She's got this guy doing everything for her. She's got all these skills down. She teaches a class on how to do it. She's the master of how to get men to give you everything you want and how to be vulnerable with them, how to share your feelings with them. And, you know, the other day, it, you know, she, she corrected me. It was very funny. She said something about... Well, I don't feel like that would be okay. You know, for my, my feelings would be this and this and this. And I said, well, I think you're misunderstanding me. And she goes, dad, I'm just expressing my feelings. I'm not asking you to change my thinking. You know, <laughs> I, I'm surprised at you. You're like the master of this. How could you say that? <laughs> That's so funny. It's really, I really, I, I totally held, held to the fire with my daughter. She knows every mistake a guy can make, you know, and I'm supposed to be perfect. I'm not perfect but I'm well on my way to getting better and better every day. But she found an amazing guy and she makes him amazing because she knows how to communicate. So a guy will listen. You always want to be, have a part of you go, how is this going to land on a man? Mm. So how's it going to sound to him? Is it going to make him feel like he's less than, or he's great. He's a hero. He's wonderful. He's helpful. He's logical. He makes sense. It's good to have around. You're grateful. You're appreciative. That's how you want him to feel about you, that you're appreciating him, that he can provide something for you. He's going to earn it and he's going to get it. So more of those little, little phrases that help with this. This doesn't take very long. I just want to talk for a few minutes, maybe five or 10. Can I have your full attention for that time? You don't have to say anything. That would be another way of setting it up. Mm -hmm. Another one was you're on a date. You're getting to know somebody. That's where I say, well, what'd you think about this? And what'd you think about that? Listen for a little while. Always acknowledge it. Well, that makes sense. That's a good idea. And then give your authentic expression and talk more. He cannot 
build his testosterone up unless he penetrates you. And you cannot, that means listen to you, go deeper into you. And you will not increase estrogen unless you ask for help. He pays for the meal. He drives you. He organizes what you would like to do. You have to let him know. These are three things on our next date that I would love to do. Because I know men always, you know, they complain that, you know, women expect men to know what to do. And so here's three things I know I would love to do. So just to give you that information, and I would appreciate if you would pick and plan it. See, now he gets to take credit for the date, but it's, he's assured he'll be confident and successful because it's what you want. And women have this silly romantic notion. Again, it's our little girl inside, the princess inside for girls, which is he's supposed to know. And if he does know, it's like, oh, magic, magic. But actually, you have the same magic if you let him know, and then he picks and he does it. He's at, actually, you anticipate it. He's doing it for you. Your estrogen levels will go up. Then you start to find your sexuality again. You know, the, yeah. the thing about you know, you, you're not going to find your sexuality or your attraction to a man until he gets to know your brain, until he does things that will help you in your life to be happier. Otherwise, you won't have estrogen. He has to know you. He has to see you. He has to penetrate you, your mind and your emotions by doing things for you, serving you in various ways. Then you will feel your sexual attraction. And if you're one of these women that sometimes, you know, you see a movie star, some rich guy, some powerful guy, and you go, oh, I want that, I want that. <laughs> that's the wrong guy. It's only because it's not available to you. And that's why you're wanting it because your, your hormones are out of balance, okay? Right. What you need to come back to your, because est- you're going to want to earn your love. Oh, he's so great. I want to be everything for him. I want to give to him. Wrong. Giving is your masculine side. Receiving is your feminine side. So yeah. another thing in terms of getting a man to listen, if you get upset and you get in an argument, if you can, I'm not demanding perfection of anybody here, but you can always say to a man, if you want him to listen to you, is you can say, oh gosh, I realize I'm getting so upset with you. All these emotions are coming up. I'm probably overreacting. I'm so sorry. Okay, that's not like I am overreacting, which is a little more tough, but if you really have good self-esteem, you can say, oh my God, I'm completely overreacting. Just let me work through it and I'll get through it and let it go own that you're overreacting in the way he's looking at you, okay? Because he thinks you're overreacting. So just acknowledge that. I'm probably overreacting. I'm triggered because I had a hard day today. Or, or hey, you know what you just said actually pushes a button. Or when you did this and this and this, I felt so hurt. Oh my God, I felt so hurt. Like you don't love me at all. And of course, of course you love me. Of course you care about me. Of course you didn't mean to do that. As opposed to, I feel like you didn't, you, you meant it. You don't love me. It's all nonsense. This is your crazy feelings. If we can get whenever you feel anything negative, you're wrong. Okay. But you're not wrong that you feel it. Yes, you feel it. But what you're feeling is, is a thought. It's a belief. So you can feel, feeling is just how you're knowing something. Do I know something by, am I feeling my emotions? Am I feeling my thoughts? Am I feeling my beliefs? And they're all different. Emotions are very different from thoughts. Negative, limited, inaccurate beliefs and thoughts produce negative emotions. Unlimited or more accurate thoughts produce positive emotions. So if you're feeling, if you're having negative emotions, you feel negative, whatever you believe at that time is wrong. It's partially true, partially true, but wrong. And not the whole picture. So you need to let, you need to just acknowledge it. You know, these are my feelings and I know I need to work through them. I just got triggered. You know, this brings up feelings from my childhood. It's really not about you, but if I can talk about it, I can let go of it. Would you listen for a few minutes? See, like that. And you know, it's, and I'm probably overreacting. So I'm sorry if it sounds negative or it sounds about you because it's really not about you if you're talking to him. But in the beginning, you want to train a man to listen just to know five or 10 minutes sort of venting about your day, which will allow him to see a part of you that you don't show anybody else. And you'll experience a surge of estrogen and you do that again and again. And then as your relationship gets closer, you're going to start venting some feelings about him. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be amazed that he is the the most amazing woman who takes responsibility for her negativity rather than spending all this time justifying, validating her negativity that he causes it all. 
and right. he's such a terrible person. He didn't call at the right time, and he didn't do this at the right time, and he didn't say this. At the, you know, this is all a waste of time. And your negative emotions in response to that is you not being loving. So it's ironic you're projecting onto him as he's not loving when you're not being loving. But it doesn't mean you one part of you doesn't care or doesn't love, but you're throwing negativity on him. So you're not being loving. And then anyway, that's so, repelling an energy, right? It doesn't yes, bring you together. Doesn't bring you together. It's taking yeah. responsibility for the results you get. Back to, you know, we can finish up, which is 101 communication, whether you're a man or woman, this is where mm -hmm. just the basic thing is when communication breaks down, it's not the other person's fault alone. It's also yeah. your fault. It's, it's a partial, yeah, they're, they're not saying, they're not understanding you clearly, and, but you're not understanding what, how they're hearing you and how you could adjust what you say in a way where he doesn't feel pushed down. Just as I would teach a man how to communicate with a woman in a way where you're not trying to control her, push her down, invalidate her, and make her wrong. And you know, somebody who really has a, a, a bitter experience could hear me today and say, oh, John just makes women wrong. I said, I make everybody wrong and I make everybody right, okay? So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be wrong, it's you just don't know what you're talking about. You don't know how to communicate. And if you, the best way to communicate with a man is being aware of the effect you're having on him. And if it's gonna bring him down, don't say it. There's another way to say it. Every complaint you have is simply a hidden request. So maybe you say, you know, you know, we've been dating for four times and you're late every time you don't call. So how would you communicate that? You know, somebody stepping on your foot, you want to want to know how do you say that to him? You basically say something like this. You know, the other when when when, when you uh, called, I thought you're going to be here at this time and you were late. And I've noticed sometimes you are on time and sometimes you do forget. Throw in a yes, sometimes you are on time and sometimes you still forget. And I get it. You know, you're a busy guy. and it just makes me feel more happy and special when you come on time. And maybe it's not that important to you. I get that, but it's something that says that I'm important and it does push a button in me and it's not about you, but if you can try to remember that, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Now that was more of a, a, a more in-depth thing. Some women, you could just say, you know, I know so many times you, you arrive on time, but occasionally you still forget to call me if you're late. I appreciate if you just give me a call and then change the subject. If you're in a room, then go out of the room. Okay. Try to let him just, let that mull over inside of him that she just complained about me, but she also appreciated me and she's asking me to make a change, but she's not demanding a change. Hey, I can do that for her. See, that's all that goes on inside of a man like that. Otherwise, I, I also like that leaving the room thing. I like oh. that technique. And the reason why is because it, like you said, keep it short. And if we stay there, we're more likely to keep going on and on and on. And then this way we leave the room, it gives him time to think about it. And then we can cool off, get over it and then yeah. come back together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And here's another little thing about that. If you stay in the room, you'll tend to give him the death stare. <laughs> or oh, I've never done that. Okay. <laughs> and the other one is what goes along with the death stare is and are you going to apologize now? Are you going to do that now? Do I get a commitment? Okay. It says like, you leave it all, leave it up to him. Let him make his changes inside of it. anything you do as a monkey is to try to change somebody as you do as a loving person is this, I embrace you, accept you as you are. And it's little change would make me happier, but I'm very happy with you as I am. That's the, that's the context. If I can make myself happy, you sometimes can make me happier. And if you're not perfect, sometimes no big deal because I'm already happy. I'm not so needy and dependent on you for everything. I've got other things going on in my life. Exactly. I love that. So Dr. Gray, where can the ladies find you? All right. Well, they can, I'm doing this big thing now on um, John Gray Mars Venus at Facebook live. And you go up to the little thing that says videos. There's like about 40 of them, two hour sessions, also the YouTube videos, but more, more, more scripted and more produced, like to the point in only five minutes, is uh, at marsvenus.com. I have hundreds of blogs and uh, I have hundreds of courses as well. <laughs> I'm, I like to talk. And, but my daughter has got me producing these, these three to five minute videos that are very nicely produced. And the, then she writes these amazing uh, blog texts on it. You know, she's a much better writer than I am. 
And so she'll video me and she'll give me a question to answer. I'll answer it in a very concise way. And what she says is don't expand, don't go there, stick to the point. You know, we probably covered 50 points today. She said one point is all people can absorb. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's very organized there, thanks to, to her. So those are my video blogs and she also does the video blogs. And that's all available at marsvenus.com. The other thing to know is if you go to that site, if you go to wellness, you can see uh, you know, maybe 50 blogs or 32 blogs I think I have on different aspects of better sleep, balanced blood sugar, more energy, better libido. Very important for everyone listening here is hormonal balance. And all of these things, there's supplements I recommend and lifestyle changes that can help you. And usually they're things you don't know. They're not the normal things you hear, you know, diet, exercise, you know, of course that's important, but most people don't do it. So what can you do if you don't do it? Uh, these are things, the easy things you can take are little things you didn't know before that can make a shift in who you are and how you feel. Because we have to recognize the body is the vehicle through which our soul can communicate. And if you, if you can learn, your soul says, okay, I wanna try all this loving stuff, I'm gonna do this. But your body has to cooperate. It needs to have hormones. It needs to make have the right blood sugar balance. It needs to have the right blood pressure. It needs to have uh, the optimal brain function. The neural connectors are connecting. These are all things that we can easily handle by making a few small changes and supplements we take are things that we eat. So I'm really big into that. I was, just a quick answer on that, uh, 25 years ago, yeah, 25 years ago now, uh, it was, I had early stage Parkinson's. Mm. And what that means is my head started involuntarily shaking and they wanted to give me the Parkinson's medicines. And so I researched it and found a natural solution and which I talk about at my website for that. It doesn't reverse advanced Parkinson's. So it's not going to cure Parkinson's, but early stage, you can restore normal brain function. And let's say I went two days without sleeping, it would come back. Okay. If I'm stressed, that's my weak link is the Parkinson's. And, uh, it, only when I do a lot of travel, whatever, and burn myself out, it will come back. I briefly fix it just like that with the right supplements. But those same supplements, what I found out is in doing that, I also cured, cured my ADHD because I used to have ADHD. I didn't even know I had it until I cured it. And then my life completely changed. Uh, ADD shows up as, uh, for some men and some women, it shows up for most women, it shows up as feeling overwhelmed, too much to do, your mind is scattered, gotta do this, gotta do this, can't, can't, can't push away, forget this, forget this. And the man, often it's like uh, too much information, I want just one piece of information. So he can't hold his attention if you go around and around as a woman, or you need to talk about feelings, he wants to get right to the point. See, that's ADD, if it's exaggerated. And so you take a child who can't listen to a teacher, they're gonna be all scattered, because it's too much, they can't take it in. They want one thing to focus on. Put that child who can't focus on a video game and they can totally focus for hours. So it's not the inability to focus, it's ability to regulate focus appropriately. And uh, so anyway, that, that I wrote a whole book on ADD, ADHD and so forth. After I cured my Parkinson's and I saw, wow, this changed my relationship skills and my ability to give up procrastination dramatically because that's another form of ADHD, is people have inhibited dopamine function is really what ADD is. Mm -hmm. Dopamine motivates us, what we're motivated for, what we're capable of focusing on. And many pe people will wait for the emergency to make dopamine and then they take action. And so that's procrastination. If we wait to the last minute till we have enough, and it'll go, you're gonna die if you don't do that, so you better do it. That's dopamine and that motivates you. And we shouldn't be having based our, our our lifestyle and our communication skills in such extremes, you know, where a man doesn't listen unless it's an emergency. Basically, yeah. you just set him up and you reward him, and that helps to heal his ADD and throw in some good supplements, and you'll have a great, great relationship. Awesome. Well, ladies, yes, go find uh, Dr. Gray's website and also his Facebook group because uh, he did an amazing Facebook Live that I was watching before this. And I'm like, I can't wait to go back and finish watching. It was two hours, but I just watched the 30 minutes and it was amazing. So thanks everybody for joining us on the It's Never Too Late show. My show is available both in video and podcast format. And if you would like to get my free video series, The Secrets About Men After 40 and Beyond, you could click right here on the video or you can go to yournextamazingstory.com.